Hey guys, last episode I made a more refined aluminum prototype. My idea worked that made its silhouette closer to that of a regular balisong. Close enough that I want to start making steel parts. It almost looks like a real product or something now, but after playing with it for a bit I noticed that my fingers would slide off the edges and I could get pinched. When looking at real butterfly knives, I noticed that they tend to have features that lend themselves to keeping your fingers from slipping off. This butterfly knife has grooves cut into it with rounded edges. And this crappier knife I found has holes in the handles like a lot of them do. They have chamfers that kind of guide your fingers into the right place, and then the holes provide a kind of texture that keeps your fingers thing in place. But I don't really like the look of a bunch of holes. I went into fusion and created a concave section that your fingers can fall into. This looks nicer, but I also think I'll add a bit of texture using different machining techniques so that your fingers have a little bit of grip. Because the shape is now more like the button divot, it kind of got me thinking. I think I should machine and fixture the handles the same way I did with the button. The handle fixture I made last time wasn't a huge success. I like trying new stuff, but I don't think the workflow of screwing the handles up from the bottom really works that good. There's just always going to be some error taking the fixture in and out of the vise. I also don't like adding threaded holes to the handles in the first place, so I came up with another fixture design. I made it so that it can make two at a time. It's just another aluminum block with some holes, so I don't think I need to show making it. I've machined steel in the past, but not on the Tormach before. So, here we go. So, I was gonna originally do the surfacing in the first stop like I did for the button, but I decided it's better to do the first stop upside down. If I drill all the holes and then machine the counterbores and the squares, in the same position, i.e. not flipping the part in between, they're more likely to be aligned. And right away I'm using a 16th inch end mill in the steel, so I was a little scared it would break right away, but it also had no problem. Oh yeah, I turned the squares into diamond skin. I'll talk about that in a different video. Once all the features are machined, the part can be aligned to the fixture with dowels and screwed down. Then I can machine the surface features of the part. I added a couple parallel tool paths going at 30 degrees and negative 30 degrees, creating a diamond pattern. I've wanted to try making textures like this for a long time. After the surfacing is done, I can switch out the screws and remove the dowels and machine the outside. This is where things got a little dicey. I tried to hold the part with the same 256 screws I was going to use to put the scissors together, but the tiny stainless screws in the aluminum just feel so risky. Like you're not sure if you're really making the screw tight or if you've just started to mush up the aluminum. Now that these screws are in, the original screws can be removed along with the dowels. The dowels were a bit stuck. I think it's because the stock had a bit of bend to it, so it was pushing into the side of the pins. Then I switched to a quarter inch end mill to go around the outside. I continue to have good luck until... As you see, the part shifts to the back and to the left. Back and to the left. Back and to the left. Uh, anyway, I had still had the dowel hole, so I decided to try realigning it, tightening it, and slowing down the program a bit. Seemed to do the trick.
Next thing I did was use a corner rounding tool. I decided to try using it because it would allow me to round over the side with the step. If I used a ball end mill it wouldn't be able to go low enough. The corner rounder is also faster than surfacing. Lastly I do some deburring. The machining went better than I thought it might, but things always look very different in person. I think the neurals, let's call them, are too big. Same thing with the 332nd roundover. Luckily I have a 1 16th inch roundover. So let's shrink these features and try again. I wanted to experiment with handle designs, but I also decided to experiment with how I filmed the machining. Hopefully you guys think it looks good. I drilled slightly bigger holes so that I can use bigger screws. That way the part won't shift. The bigger holes in the handle shouldn't be a problem, but if it is I'll go back to the other screws, but make a steel fixture, or at least put steel inserts in the fixture. That way I shouldn't have a problem tightening the screws and messing up the threads. Uh-oh, I guess things still aren't working quite right. I tried to mess with the speeds and feeds while it was running like I was sailing a ship in a storm, but clearly it was a fixturing problem, not a speeds and feeds problem. But uh, it basically got it done and I let it finish the round over and it came out not bad. In fact, I like the look of it a lot more than the first one. It's easier to see and feel the concave finger area I made. I like that the pattern is more subtle, but I think it could be even more so. So I made another one off camera with even closer tool paths. There's something a bit strange about this one. I think it's fine enough that with the 3 16 ball end mill I used, some of the imperfections in the tool path cause more obvious inconsistencies. I think I'll mess with smaller diamonds using smaller end mills in the future but right now I just want to try something completely different. I made this wavy pattern. It seems to have worked pretty well. I think I just used some screws that were slightly too long and that's why the part moved. I retapped the hole deep enough that no screw I have could bottom out, so now it really is secure. But I guess that's what you get when you buy screws in 16th inch increments and don't give yourself any extra room. Now I can put these screws in the deeper tapped holes and should be good. I also broke up the program so that I can put this extra screw where the step is just to be extra safe. After the outer contour is machined, I can remove it. Then the step is machined. And I used a 1 16th inch radius bit again. I quite like how it came out. I've always wanted to try making Eoshe patterns using CNC. In the past, people used Rose engine lathes or similar machines or machines that work like spirographs to create complex patterns that could make something look fancier, but also harder to counterfeit. So this is sort of my attempt at doing something similar. On this next one, I tried to get a guilloché look using circles. I don't think it quite came out how I wanted. I was looking for a fancy, classy look, but this looks more aggressive and heavy metal to me. But maybe you guys like it. Let's try something else though. This is one I did that's like the diamond pattern. But instead of diamonds, it has squares. Except it doesn't. I thought it would look cool to use lines that match the angle of the handle, and then use concentric circles to create a 
polar grid pattern, but maybe it's a bit too subtle. The effect also may have been diminished by the largeness of the end mill again. Uh, not super into this design, but with my process of making the handles now working well, I thought I'd try making two at a time. I wasn't ready to give up on the circles pattern. I tried shrinking the circles to see if more of the crossing of the circles on the sides would show up. I also decided to try a pattern with triangles. Doing these patterns really lags Fusion 360. Fusion really doesn't like having lots of sketch entities in one sketch. I can create repeating patterns in the machining environment, but then it creates a perfect copy of the toolpath and won't change with the contours of the handle. So that won't work with my 3D curve I'm trying to create. Smaller circles didn't change much. There are bigger triangular shapes on the sides you can see, but I still don't like it. The triangles look awesome though. I thought it looked too similar to the diamonds, but I definitely like it more. Alright, I'm definitely addicted to making patterns. Let's move on to the next ones. I wanted to create a pattern using only tool paths so it wouldn't be so slow to make from the software lagging. Okay, here's my idea to get more shapes that are interesting into the handles by using only circles. Maybe it's less guilloche and more water ripples or spider webs or something. It's made with the spiral tool path, but it's set so it's concentric circles like a target. The size and outer limit of the circles is set so they go from one screw hole to another, slightly touching in the middle of each target. I also thought I probably should go ahead and make at least one that's perfectly smooth. Okay, not bad. I think I probably like this more than the other circle ones. It's a bit strange, but cool. I was gonna say maybe it'd look better in another material, cause mild steel always tends to look uglier to me, but... This smooth handle is pretty nice. The surface is great. You can't even tell where the surfacing ends and the corner rounder begins. Seeing this really makes me think maybe I should do some more subtle patterns engraved into a smoother base surface. Alright, let's try some stainless steel. Hopefully this 303 will live up to the easy to machine label on McMaster. It seems good to me. I made some adjustments to the speeds and feeds, of course. I decided to play it safe and go ahead and use a spot drill on the stainless. And it does seem to have helped with the alignment because pulling the dowel pins seemed to be slightly easier than before. But that also could be because the stock wasn't as bent. The chips seem less stringy and sticky than the mild steel on the drills, which is nice but maybe I just needed to increase the feed earlier. The surfacing went well. I went to a smoother finish than my previous roughing before I did the patterns, but I didn't go as smooth as the last one I did. That one had a super long runtime, but I'm not leaving it there. I switch to a 16th inch ball end mill and try making a smaller pattern. In this case, honeycomb. Everything futuristic has a honeycomb pattern on it. It just looks cool. I wish that the project tool path was designed to find the longest route it can take. Because I had to make two separate sketches to make it do at least some of the machining without a million linking moves. But I know that it should be able to do nearly the whole pattern without jumping up and down a bunch. 
especially if you tell it it's okay to re-machine vectors. After the hexes were done, I could machine the outside away. And then the step. And I'm still sticking to a 16th inch round over. And done. I made four. I want to make a full steel prototype and I thought I'd just go ahead and make enough of this pattern that match. Because I'm pretty happy with how it came out. And I also literally ran out of mild steel so I couldn't test it before moving on to stainless. But I actually did make one with triangles first. I don't think it looks as good as the one with triangular pyramids. So yeah, I'll make some more steel parts in the next video. I'm going to stick with this design for a bit. I look at ballast songs and think maybe I need more taper, maybe I need less taper, maybe the handles should be flat, maybe they should have holes. I want my product to look unique so people know it's not just some random butterfly knife. But I also want to appeal to people who already like butterfly knives. So it's a balance that I think I need to get feedback on from ballast song collectors. Then there's the usability. I think it's time I start learning some more advanced tricks. That way I know how good my own product is. I'm kind of a clumsy guy, so I got this trainer, but I ordered one that looks even better. Hopefully I'll show my progress doing tricks in a future video. Well, that's all I got for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.